The topic that I was asked to present is here on the slide about uh, the management of obesity, diabetes, and cardiometabolic risk. I'm glad I focused on the first one because the second was already covered very nice by uh, Dr. Bullo, and probably the next speaker will cover also the third. But however, I'm going to uh, focus on that, particularly on the management. So these are the commercial support. Uh, I do have uh, grants from the California Water Commission and for the International Nut Council for many years. Is that which one? Okay. And the uh, results that I'm presenting here have been peer review. <laughs> this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, and this is the, the reason. Frequent nut consumption uh, has been related to the, with the prevention of heart disease. This is something that we published 25 years ago with the Adventist Health Study as the landmark paper that uh, put nuts on the stage. Uh, at the same time, with subsequent clinical trials that we started at Loma Linda and we're following many other centers around the world show that nuts have an improvement on the serum lipid profile of uh, the subjects, whether they are regular uh, blood lipids or they are uh, with dyslipemia. Here we have in a graphic form the four uh, studies that uh, were originally uh, published uh, relating uh, nuts with cardiovascular disease and all went in the same direction, all in an inverse relationship, in a, a dose-response relationship fashion. At the same time, we know uh, the beneficial effects of uh, uh, blood lipids and on a <coughs> pool analysis of 25 uh, studies uh, that we were able to get the data from all the original data, uh, we clearly shown that uh, nuts improve uh, regardless of the dosage and regardless of the type of nut, uh, dramatically the LDL cholesterol, and in hypertroglycidemic subjects also lowers the triglycerides. So nuts uh, are high in total fat and therefore are perceived as fattening. Uh, subjects that have uh, diabetes or metabolic syndrome, uh, they tend to be obese. Therefore, I mean, the question is, uh, we as clinicians or public health officers recommending the consumption of nuts uh, to prevent heart disease or for the control of serum lipids, uh, are we going to make the subjects become obese and really uh, not having a benefit? So this is the relevant question uh, that has clinical and public health relevance. So let's uh, address the issue of nuts in the context of body weight and uh, obesity. Uh, prospective uh, core studies uh, have uh, the first one that was published uh, relating uh, the relationship of uh, eating nuts prospectively and changes in body weight was the SUN study in Spain. Um, it was relatively a small epidemiological study as far as the number of subjects, but it found that uh, basically those that hardly ever eat nuts or occasionally there is no change. However, those that ate nuts two or more times per week, which is not very often, but it was probably uh, the highest uh, consumption of nuts in this particular core, uh, they had a significant decrease in weight. Again, this is not cross-sectional, this is prospectively. Uh, the same was for the risk of becoming overweight or obese. So this is the first evidence that we had prospectively that eating nuts seems, uh, at least frequently, is not associated with increase of body weight, and if anything, seems lower of, of weight. So uh, these are uh, the results that uh, we have in, uh, in our form. Subsequently, <coughs> Uh, the nurses health study data was analyzed also prospectively over eight years. And uh, it was found that uh, 
those that uh, eat not frequently have uh, a tendency to uh, gain less weight than those that uh, eat not less frequently. And at the same time, the risk of becoming obese uh, was clearly uh, lower. And you see at the bottom of this line, the risk uh, decreased uh, as the frequency of not consumptions increased. Uh, so these are the results. The, the higher not consumption was not associated with greater body weight. At the same time, it was associated with a slightly lower risk of weight gain and obesity. So it seems like incorporating nuts, at least in a prospective fashion in free living subjects, I mean, uh, doesn't uh, have any risk for obesity or for gaining weight uh, other than the one related with age, uh, more than those that choose not to consume nuts. A subsequent paper from uh, the Harvard group in which there were uh, uh, three cohorts, the ones that uh, they have, the Nurses Health Study 1, Nurses Health Study 2, and also the Physicians Health Study, uh, it showed that uh, they looked simultaneously, not at the effect of nuts, but simultaneously a bunch of many foods. And here we have on the top of this slide all the foods that prospectively, after uh, years, four years of follow-up, um, one serving of each one of these foods, according to the typical American servings, uh, was corresponding uh, with increase or decrease of weight. And as you can see, uh, potato chips and potato fries, processed meats and processed meats, butter, all of these in the three cohorts, so in males and females and in different uh, age categories, all were related with increase in body weight. However, on the ones in the middle that are uh, the foods that uh, relate to lowering body weight after four years, the frequency of consumption of, uh, sorry, one serving of nuts uh, corresponds with lower uh, body weight uh, and also yogurt, fruits, and whole grains. So not only nuts per se, but when they are simultaneously adjusted for other uh, things in the diet, because uh, eating nuts may be associated with a specific uh, diet pattern, but I mean, when all the f uh, foods are simultaneously put into the equation, it seems like on its own, independent than other uh, foods, nuts um, uh, prospectively seems to be associated with um, less uh, body weight. <coughs> so, uh, the group of Dr. Salas and Bullo, I think, published uh, two years ago uh, meta-analysis on the randomized clinical trials. There were most, if not all, of these studies were not done to test the effect of nuts on body weight. Those were the studies that were done uh, basically to test the effect on cardiovascular disease risk factors, serum lipids primarily, and then they reported body weight. So in short term, most of them randomized clinical trials. The weight was published and they did a meta-analysis meta relating uh, what is the uh, not rich diet versus the control diet, regardless what is the control diet, whether a healthy diet or unhealthy, the Mediterranean, the low fat, whatever. I mean, and these are the results. On the 31 papers published for which uh, body weight was reported, uh, they found that weight, uh, weight, uh, the mean weight was uh, different. And here we have uh, the analysis. And on all of them, there is a tendency in this particular uh, graphic is body weight, a tendency, but not significantly uh, so lower uh, body weight. The same for uh, body mass index and the same for the waist circumference. And here we have the numerical numbers. So in general, I mean, there was um, a difference compared with the control diets. Diets enriched with nuts did not increase body weight, body mass index, or waist circumference in controlled clinical trials. So not only did not, but there is a tendency uh, for a decrease. What do we know about nuts as a vital or important component of uh, weight loss diets. I'm going to present uh, three studies that uh, have uh, been published uh, um, on diets that were rich in nuts and what happens to the body weight in the context of uh, weight control. The first one was conducted uh, at Harvard, and uh, the, they were testing the effect of a Mediterranean diet, rich in olive oil and nuts, compared against a high-carbohydrate diet. And uh, 
or low fat diet, sorry. And uh, it was on 100 uh, subjects for a year and a half. And these are the results uh, as far as uh, body weight, BMI, and waist circumference. On the bottom of the slide, we have the not rich diet, Mediterranean diet, and all these parameters went down compared with baseline. However, on the low fat diet, these parameters tended to go up. Uh, we conducted one at Loma Linda uh, in the context of uh, persons uh, with uh, cardiometabolic risk that were obese, in which we gave a low uh, caloric diet, uh, or low uh, energy, uh, and one was um, with um, almonds, uh, with two to three ounces of uh, almonds, and the other one uh, was with high carbohydrates. Uh, that was the, the two type of diets. And as expected, since it was energy restricted, uh, both diets, uh, over the course of the 24 um, weeks, uh, lower the body weight. However, the one uh, reaching almonds significantly so more than the other one. Uh, this was a short term, it was not follow up. Uh, so here we have uh, the study, the supplemented with almonds in contrast to the high carbohydrates, uh, resulted in a decrease in BMI by 18%. So, in summary, these two previous studies uh, show that incorporating nuts in weight control diets um, is not associated with increase in body weight, if anything, uh, with a decrease and then better results than without nuts. There is another study that was published uh, uh, recently by Foster Group, in which they tested the, the same thing with a larger uh, sample size, 125 overweight subjects, and they were uh, <coughs> compare against uh, a standard control diet for lowering weight. It was uh, energy deficient, both diets, and immediately both diets decreased body weight, but more so the control diet than the almond diet. And after 18 months, so a year and a half uh, of follow-up, uh, the same tendency existed, but the difference between the two diets, I mean, uh, became non-significant. So we can see, based on uh, this study, that uh, a diet that uh, is hypocaloric, that incorporates almonds, uh, do get uh, a less decrease in body weight than a controlled diet, but over the course of uh, a, a less intensive follow-up of a year and a half, there was no difference between the two diets. However, the one with uh, almonds, I mean, had an improvement uh, in many cardiovascular disease parameters other than body weight. So, what do we know <coughs> about uh, the effect of nuts in diabetes? I'm going to go uh, fast for the sake of time and because it was already presented just by the previous speaker. We have here uh, a few epidemiological studies and we see that, um, except the physician's study, there was no relationship. When you select the, the ones for which are in women, we see that uh, there is a tendency to go down. So at least the epidemiological evidence seems to be in favor, uh, not totally demonstrated, that in females, um, eating nuts frequently uh, uh, tends uh, to reduce the risk of diabetes. Um, in a study published by the Harvard Group, in which uh, they did with the North Scale study uh, a subsequent follow-up, they found that all the knots, one knot seems the one that have the strongest relationship as far as trying to uh, lower the risk of diabetes. Uh, and in the PREDIMED that has been already presented or mentioned here maybe 200 uh, times in, uh, today, uh, here we have the graphic as far as the accumulate, accumulated incidence of diabetes over five years, and the line in between is the one of the diet with nuts. Uh, there was a tendency to be lower, and it, at the end, the computation is an 18% less, but not significantly so, because the 95% confidence interval encompass one. So uh, these are the studies with, with large groups. On uh, a meta-analysis uh, of six studies published, here we have the graphic, uh, we have the same. It seems like in the meta-analysis, the results seems significant. So I would say, 
In general, the epidemiological evidence relating nuts and diabetes goes in the right direction. However, is not as consistent as it is with nuts and cardiovascular disease. So we can say with a high degree of certainty that nuts protect against cardiovascular disease. Uh, and, but however, the degree of certainty for uh, diabetes is not so. Particularly for men, because there is very few studies done in men and doesn't seem to have the same effect that in women. OK. Uh, and other aspects of the diabetes that are related more to the management, uh, we know that the effect of nodes on glycemic control and diabetes in a meta-analysis that uh, was published a couple of uh, last year, uh, in which 450 subjects were involved, uh, there was uh, computed uh, or assessed in this meta-analysis that there was a 20% significant decrease in hemoglobin A1C and in fasting uh, uh, blood glucose. However, the differences with uh, fasting insulin and HOMA were not significantly. And here we have the results in a uh, graphic form. Uh, so what do we know about uh, NOTS and cardiometabolic risk? Basically, we uh, published a, a study on data from the Adventist Health Study that we did a new twist to the issue of nuts. We were trying to see if the effects of eating peanuts versus tree nuts, there was uh, any difference as far as the risk of metabolic syndrome and obesity. And here we have uh, these four uh, columns um, have is not a dose response, is uh, the first one, that is the, the one to your left, um, is the group of subjects that were low in both um, ground nuts, peanuts, and tree nuts, that is all the other nuts. And then the intermediate, they are uh, low in tree nuts but high in peanuts. The next one, the third one, is high in tree nuts but low in peanuts. And the fourth one is uh, high in tree nuts and low in peanuts. And it looks like, uh, based on this graphic, that peanuts has a more reduced effect, a more neutral effect, but three nuts is the driving force here as far as uh, metabolic syndrome and obesity. And this is confirmed why, in the same way, numerical way, we see that the effects according to the components of the metabolic syndrome, uh, they also have uh, this tendency. But the, the ones that have a greater impact is in abdominal obesity and it, uh, hypertriglyceridemia, with no significant changes in the other one. Uh, a systematic uh, uh, review uh, on this issue of the criteria for metabolic syndrome uh, done by the group here, uh, by Dr. Blanco Mejia, the first author, uh, found a tendency to lower all these components. Uh, and that is uh, all what I'm going to present as far as metabolic syndrome. So, uh, except for this uh, slide from the, that was presented this morning uh, on the PREDIMET uh, that shows that those that consume nuts um, have um, greater uh, ability to reduce, uh, um, oh, sorry, I'm on uh, the odds ratio for uh, reversion of metabolic syndrome among subjects that had metabolic syndrome at baseline, I mean, is greater uh, compared with the control group. And the incidence of participants that didn't have metabolic syndrome is lower. So it looks like, uh, in, at least in the PREDIMET, there was a tendency, I mean, not have this, uh, I would say, dual good effect. For those that do not have metabolic syndrome, um, they have less risk to become uh, uh, with metabolic syndrome. And those that already have, they can reverse. OK, what potential mechanisms? OK, let's go for obesity. That is uh, the, the one uh, that I'm more relevant for this presentation. Is that why subjects with high fat, not diets, uh, in an a caloric or higher uh, uh, energy intake, do not have, uh, do not weight gain, and sometimes even lose weight. Well, there are two mechanisms. Uh, there, sorry, there are several uh, potential explanations for that. One is reverse causation. Uh, another one is higher energy expenditure, uh, then enhanced satiety, uh, food displacement, and finally, incomplete absorption uh, from nuts. 
uh, what is reverse causation? So subjects that are obese or have a tendency to become obese, they refrain from eating nuts. And those that do not have, they are not obese, I mean, they eat nuts. So this is probably one of the explanations in the epidemiologic studies. Uh, Nuts may increase uh, resting energy expenditure, although this has not been done in all studies. The ones that we did at Loma Linda we couldn't find, but other authors have found uh, higher energy expenditure after uh, a few weeks eating nuts. Nuts may enhance satiety and therefore also replace or displace energy from other foods. I do think this is the main mechanism to give an explanation. Given the high protein and high fat, they have satiety, and people that eat nuts, whether in clinical trials or free living, I mean, displace uh, other foods. Here we have a bunch of uh, studies that has been reported in which the, and this is the percentage of food displacement. Besides that, a mechanism that was uh, proposed by us uh, more than 20 years ago is that nuts uh, may not uh, have all the energy in practical terms that is reported in the food composition tables. This has been developed by many groups, including the one here, and is basically that the, the nuts, although they are rich in energy, not all of the energy is absorbed. We reported and others uh, many years ago that the, in clinical trials that the increase in fecal fat uh, excretion um, and comparing the control group with the not group. Uh, by the group here, Dr. Dr. Kendall, uh, they found that when in a dose response of almonds, when they were in the control group, that means it's the full dose of muffin, uh, and then compared with the half or high dosage, the energy in the feces is higher. So being the diets equal except for nuts. I mean, it looks like the nuts are responsible for the greater excretion of fat and energy in the feces. And this is partially, if not totally, related to the mastication. This study shows that the more chewing, uh, I mean, the less fat or less energy found in feces. So this has to do uh, with the cells that contain the, the fatty uh, nodules in, inside. So here we have to your left, one that has been digested and one that has not been uh, enough mastication, and you have intact cells. So other mechanisms for the uh, potential beneficial effects on diabetes or metabolic syndrome are related to the nutrient composition that was presented before. So I'm just listing here the nutrients that uh, are uh, thinking to be related and many publications that has either studied that or related to this. And here we have uh, some of the studies that has been published as far as the effect of anti-inflammatory effect. Nuts may have an anti-inflammatory effect based on the results uh, being able to uh, lower uh, markers of inflammation in many uh, short-term clinical trials. So, in conclusion, epidemiological and clinical data indicate that the inclusion of nuts uh, into the diets pose little risk for weight gain and uh, support by the mechanistic studies that has been follow up afterwards. Not diets improve glycemic control parameters and reduce diabetes risk in women. Uh, not diets are associated with reduction of abdominal obesity in some studies and reversal of metabolic syndrome in the PREDIMET. And thus, it seems appropriate uh, to recommend the inclusion of nuts in diets that meet the energy. Thank you very much.